Mike Giardi, take it away, week 12. Thanks, Rich. Joe Burrow is the gift that keeps on giving, both as a player and for his personality. Earlier this week, the quarterback was asked what he learned about himself with Jamar Chase being sidelined, and he said, nothing really. He said, I am who I thought I was, and he said it with a smirk. Who he is is one of the best playmakers in the National Football League. He's pushed this Bengals offense to 30 or more points in four of their last five games, mostly without Chase. When they talked to his teammate, safety Jesse Bates, he said his energy, Burrow's energy, uplifts the entire team. He said, quite frankly, it's a vibe that we have with Joe Burrow. He said the only way you can understand it, if you're in the locker room with us. Back to you, Rich. And they're getting some vibes uh, similar to last year. What do I mean by that? Look at this. Going into their 11th game of the year last year, same hey, record, that's same amazing. points per that's game amazing. allowed. That's almost amazing. the same points per game scored, same number of total touchdowns. Mm. Joe Burrow's passer rating is damn near the same. Amazing. So can they go on a run this year <laughs> similar to the one that they went on last year with that being the base? Michael Irvin, what do you think? Man, Rich, listen, I, I absolutely believe they can go on a run. Even though now you look at it, you Baltimore's ahead of them, ahead of them right now by one game, and, and Baltimore's next four points all comes with the losing records. Five of the last seven all come with the winning record. But I'm a wide receiver. And this guy here throws the football. I love Lamar. I love Lamar, but he's only thrown six touchdowns in the last seven games. This guy's thrown 16 touchdowns in the last seven games. And he loves that, oh, y'all don't believe in us thing. Oh, nobody gave us a chance thing. Those numbers that are exactly where they were last year, this is exactly when they picked up that, that steam and started making that run. And he's getting Jamar Chase back pretty soon because everybody's talking about him getting healthy. I'm still believing in Cincinnati for me. I'm taking Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals. To win the AFC North. You better believe that's what I said, Rich. I did hear that. And Jamar Chase may not be back today. Joe Mixon already ruled out. That said, Burrow takes punches and keeps on ticking. Nine yes, sacks sir. in last year's playoff win in Tennessee. Sarah Walsh is in the state of Play Ohio win. where the Buccaneers come off the bye and the big win in Germany. Yeah, they found something in Germany we hadn't seen since week one, and that would be a ground game. They rushed it for 44 attempts. That's a season high for them. The bulk of those carries going to their rookie running back, Rashad White. And they're going to need him today because Leonard Fournette did not make that trip. He's got a hip injury sustained in Germany. Now, Tom Brady told me this week that the momentum from that ground game in Germany is super important, something he says they need every week, but he said especially today here in Cleveland under soggy conditions. The Browns, for their part, want to get their ground game going after after being held in check by the Bills last week. Tom Brady coming off a bye has been particularly good for the Buccaneers. 11-2 and two since joining them after a bye. And he said, you know, you get that ground game going, this offense is waking up at the right time of the year. This year, a slow start for Tom Brady. Yeah! Brady back. He's back. This is a bad throw by Brady. He fumbled the ball. What's going on with this offense right now? This is what they call a remix. Great throw by Brady. Touchdown to Tampa Bay. Fire the cannon. And they caught ball. Touchdown to Tampa Bay. It's Munich. Way to go, boy. And the toes were left in his heart. Touchdown. Brady's back. All right, Kurt Warner, that's the last time this guy was on the field, Tom Brady, and we were there with we him saw that in Munich. Yes. We were there for live and in yes. color, you know, and, and uh, I, I'm going to ask you if that game against Seattle, they found their offensive identity because it was a little different, wasn't it, than the, how they've been playing the game. He came into our meeting, he says, we can't run the ball, we don't run the ball, and all of a right. sudden, what do they do in that game against Seattle? <laughs> This guy named Rashad White, the rookie, right from Arizona State. He's running the football like crazy. Leonard Fournette had something to do with it, too. He won't be playing today. He's hurt. But Rashad White is fast and dynamic. And all of a sudden, they have found their run game. Is that their new identity? Well, you, you talked about us covering the game in Germany. And what I loved is what they did in the past game because they 
focused on their Spielmachers, their playmakers in the pass game, what? and they used their Spielmachers. All three of their playmakers on the outside were integral in what they were doing with their big plays down the field. That, to me, is what's really been missing, is that Mike Evans has been there all year, and it really starts with him. He's the big playmaker, the guy that they like to throw it to down the field, those one-on-one -on -one situations to get the safety drop right here. I'm going to my main guy. I know he's in man-to-man -man coverage, but I'm going to trust him to go up and make a play. We haven't seen Chris Godwin kind of be the same guy since coming back from that ACL. He's the guy that works the middle of the field, the tough guy down the middle of the field. We saw him making the big plays over the middle, and then Julio Jones was their big addition. Hadn't really seen much of him right here. Not a big throw down the field, but playmaking by Julio Jones on the short underthrow right there as they carry and him getting into the end zone. So I love the fact that they got all three of these guys involved. So run the football like you're talking about. Get those three playmakers involved. Yeah, that's the kind of identity they want to have for the rest of the season. Spielmachers, okay? Spielmachers. You know, if they get those guys rolling with the run game, this defense is pretty salty, too. They got a chance. They're going to stir it up a little bit, aren't they? Rich, back to you. They were too now are sitting on the outside looking in currently at the Jets who have the Bears at home. The Bengals are sitting in the five spot. They could potentially lose. The Chargers are in Arizona sitting there at five and five. The Jeff Saturday Colts still in the mix. And in the NFC, the Vikings are sitting uh, right now right behind the Eagles who, as we know, have the Packers on Sunday night football. The Seahawks are currently your seventh seed with the Giants having lost to the Cowboys. The division looks bleak for the Giants. Bleak. However, they also have a loss to the Seahawks that could count against them and they haven't played the Commanders at all yet. So the Commanders have a wide open look at the NFC playoff picture as well. Thanksgiving highlights are now in the books. Which two seed is more likely to become the one seed, the Bills? or the Vikings. Steve Mariucci, give me your answer. This was that. a tough one, Rich, you know? Yeah, it was. But I'm going to go with uh, Irv's MVP candidate because you got the Vikings at 9-2, and two, Eagles at 9-1. and one. Well, how do they leapfrog those guys? I, you look at their schedule, all right? And the Eagles have the big game. You never know how that's going to go against an Aaron Rodgers tonight. But, boy, the Eagles have a tough schedule. Tennessee, they're pretty good. They play the Giants twice at Dallas on Christmas Eve, right? That's a pretty tough schedule. The Vikings, on the other hand, they're going to be playing the Jets next. Who I don't know who's going to be playing quarterback for them. And then Detroit. They've beaten all their division teams already. Detroit, mm -hmm. Chicago, and Green Bay. The Vikings yeah. have beaten those guys. And so and you have Indy. You know, so they've got a chance now to, uh, with a little bit, little, I don't want to say easy schedule, but it's a, not as tough as the Eagles' schedule. Vikings have a good chance. Yeah, I, I'm going to go on the other side, and I'm going to go with the Bills. And... I looked at this, too, and I looked at the schedules of both those top teams, and I'm thinking, I'm not sure either one is going to be able to catch the other one. But but I take the Bills because I believe the Bills have so many different ways to beat you. They're, they're such a talented, balanced football team. Plus, they have the tiebreaker over Kansas City That's because they bigger. beat them this year. And that, to me, is the difference. Is I don't know if they can make up two games uh, if they needed to, but if they can make up one game and they get the tiebreaker, I think they've got a chance to possibly steal that number one seed, even though the Chiefs are playing really, really well right now. Yeah, and it's, it, this, this is this is really a, a close call, close shave as they called it. And, but but I I landed on giving it to the Buffalo Bills too, especially after I watched last week, man, and watch Stephon Diggs just, you know. Become that spill maker, however you say that spill name. Spillmaker. Spillmaker, okay. He became that. Because I, I, I always say that there's a time, a great receiver, there's a time when you're a great receiver and a great leader that you have to be selfless and get everybody involved. But there's a moment that you got to be selfish and say, I'm going to make this play. And he said that last week. I'm going to make this play. And he showed up and made the play. Also, if I give it to Minnesota, I just don't think they're going to... I think the Cowboys also are going to be in there. The Cowboys are in the There's, there's, the right, there's right, no right, doubt. Right. You know who's also the in the mix that we, still in there. that we didn't mention here? Uh, <laughs> right. just the Bills play first. So that's one of their current two seed for this conversation. Dolphins coming off a bye against the Texans team. It's going to be another one tough. Kyle Allen today They'll in Miami. They'd be, they, the they, they could be the, they would be the two seed if this was the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, about maybe potentially seven hours from now so just keep all that in mind right. the bills however also as we just saw in the highlight without von miller for the moment and potentially for a while the question is how long as we saw him get carted off the in rapid you have the floor 
Rich Von Miller has already been ruled out for the Bills' Thursday game against the Patriots, which is not good news, but also may not be as bad a news as it seemed at the time. Anytime a guy gets ruled out immediately, always terrible. We will see if this actually is. My understanding is he's dealing with a lateral meniscus tear in his knee. He is going to be in wait and see mode right now. Essentially, the Bills are going to reassess after about another week and just see how is he feeling? Has the rehab worked? This is something that Von Miller can play with with a brace. He actually has played with a brace before, had about 15 sacks. He has done fine. Or is this something where the knee is not responding well and he needs season ending surgery? So a big decision, big outcome coming for the Bills. Meanwhile, the Cincinnati Bengals are still waiting for their star, Jamar Chase, still dealing with a hip injury, a labral tear, and other injuries to that hip. He is questionable today, but I am told not expected to play. They also are going to be without Joe Mixon. He's dealing with a concussion, so the Bengals will be shorthanded today. Rich. All right, thanks very much, Ian. Greatly appreciated. That's